This first Sunday in October is a busy one for pumpkin picking. In patches, stores, and at roadside markets, people of all ages will be in search of that perfect pumpkin for their fall festivities. Many will focus on its color, stem, and shape. But for those taking part in pumpkin way-off competitions around Wisconsin, it's, and pardon the pumpkin pun, go big or gourd home. Winnie Dorch puts the Wisconsin giant pumpkin growers in our Sunday morning spotlight. Jim Ford's backyard in Bristol, Wisconsin looks like something out of a children's storybook, a farmer growing massive magical pumpkins. I have a feeling this pumpkin's going to be heavy. It looks heavy for sure. Oh, of course. Some as big as Cinderella's pumpkin carriage. It's measuring somewhere around 1,900 pounds right now. Wow. I became a giant pumpkin grower about a little over 20 years ago. That was in New Hampshire, the very first club he joined. I learned a lot from the growers there. But Ford's roots are right here in the Midwest. I'm going to rinse off my pumpkin a little bit. I became a member uh, of the Wisconsin Club about six or seven years ago when I moved back. How many pumpkins have you grown in your entire life? Giant pumpkins? Yes. I'm going to estimate over 100. The beauty is watching the pumpkins grow over time, manifesting the success of the end result. When I see the health of the plant, when I see the vines growing, and I, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking potential, potential, potential. It's the anticipation, mm -hmm. it's the, the hope, the future. Ford plants the seed in early mid-April. We start them inside, we get them in the ground, maybe a, a week or two after that. And uh, since we're getting them in the ground six weeks before you put a normal pumpkin, we put structures over the pumpkin with greenhouse plastic and I use underground heating cables. And so we're, we're trying to fool that pumpkin that it is June, not April inside that greenhouse. So we, we want early growth so we get pollination around mid-June. This pumpkin itself, was pollinated on June 13th. So you do the math, that's a um, little over three months old. It's, that pumpkin's about 95 days old. We want to plant, you know, that has 10, 12, 15 feet of vine length before we get a pumpkin set on it. He spends weeks watching the heat levels, a little watering here and there, fertilizing and then pruning. Up to 75 to 100 gallons of water a day per plant. Most growers uh, for June and July, maybe early August, are on their hands and knees, pruning, bearing the vines, bringing soil. And... Time is of the essence when they're planting and taking care of these orange babies. You know in the spring before you plant your pumpkin when you're going to harvest your pumpkin because these way-offs are already set in stone. Those way-offs are serious and competitive. The question is, who has the biggest pumpkin of them all? I like the competition. I like the, the fellowship of other growers. And uh, I get spiritual analogies uh, from growing. I have pumpkin envy. I, I could look at a pumpkin that's 500 pounds smaller than mine, and I think it's bigger than mine. <laughs> so. Look at that. Look at that. Wait, did I call that? But why would anyone even want the challenge of growing a pumpkin so big? It has its perks, at least for Ford. It made me a better grower of anything. Because I'm a giant pumpkin grower, I could grow a better petunia. I could grow a better cucumber. I could grow a better tomato. Ford has taken home some wins, but he's still hard on himself. Last year, I took away two first place finishes. This year so far, I've been the two way offs and I've come in second twice. Ooh, that's still so, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I'm not looking for pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the fans on and I'm gonna dry off my pumpkin. It's to get airflow around the pumpkin. And it keeps um, disease and rot to happen. Ford doesn't keep his garden friends around too long after he shows them off at contest. He sells them. You wanna buy one? <laughs> I took that one to the Cedarburg way off, and that is on Cedarburg Creek Farm in Cedarburg. And they display it, then kids go woo and wow, you know. How much do you charge for these pumpkins? Whatever I could get for them. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that small thousand pounder yet, 
But this one I got sold to a place in Illinois just this morning. The pumpkin patch is quite a sight to see from afar. Neighbors appreciate his love for pumpkins. They love it. They they they, they come here and watch me harvest. Uh, this is a nice elderly woman. She comes out here a couple times a year and brings her family out. You might even be surprised what you learn. What makes a good pie pumpkin? First of all, it shouldn't be a pumpkin. Use a butternut squash or something in that family. Pumpkins make terrible pumpkin pies. As the season turns, his pumpkin growing takes a break, but the fairy tale pumpkin patch will always come back. This is for its happy place. We're talking about the COVID years. I don't worry about COVID in my pumpkin patch. There's no COVID out there. You know, I have air sanitizing me. I'm breathing fresh air. 